Well, good evening again, whiskey lovers. It is me, the Whiskey Coach. Today we got a couple different bourbons uh, to review. And I'd like to give a shout out to jsnoop31, who requested that I do a little bit of I.W. Harper. And I asked him kind of what he thought, and he said he definitely wanted to uh, have me review the standard. And, you know, if I had the 15 to knock that out as well, and I thought, you know, it'd be better if we did both to kind of compare and contrast. So we're going to jump into that uh, tonight. So first, yeah, like I mentioned, thanks jsnoop31 for the suggestion. I appreciate that. Uh, also wanted to give a shout out to Bobby. Uh, Bobby is uh, a liquor store, I guess, co-owner here locally. Um, he actually sold me the IW Harper. I hadn't had this one. I've had this one before, the 15 year old, and really, really liked it. But I needed this bottle, so I went and grabbed it uh, here today locally. And Bobby was actually our 700th uh, subscriber, so thanks Bobby for that. And since then, it looks like somebody else jumped on board, so we're up to 701. Thanks guys, I love, uh, love you all being here. So, with no further ado, let's jump into tonight's review. So, we again, we have the IW Harper Standard uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. 41% uh, alcohol, 82 proof. Then we have the beautiful crystal decanter, kind of a, you know, kind of a shelf trophy here, if you ask me, with an awesome, oh, no, wait, it's kind of bad there, awesome stopper. Uh, this guy clocks in at 43% alcohol, 86 proof. I.W. Harper is an absolutely legendary name in bourbon. Um, you know, was introduced in the 1800s, 1850s, I believe. Was reintroduced uh, into the States uh, in 2015, so recently. But was a mainstay, you know, kind of through the, the bourbon, you know, heydays in the U.S. in the 50s and 60s. And then, like I said, kind of went away and was reintroduced. Uh, I always kind of get a kick out of the little, the little logo that they have, kind of an old-fashioned a uh, top hat and cane kind of reminds you of the Johnny Walker logo actually uh, but I, I I like marketing good marketing I think they have a nice nice little logo nice design here so that's uh, that's kind of helpful um like I said I've had this 15 year old and I absolutely loved it you don't hear a lot of overly glowing reviews on this or positive reviews on this I like it a lot this I've actually never had and conversely I've heard really mostly negative reviews on this so I'm really going to enjoy tonight's review to contrast and compare these two guys. Um, a side note, they also have European releases uh, of a 12-year. And I actually have that. I should have brought that over. I actually have that at the bar. Um, but uh, I'm probably not going to break into that one quite yet because I don't know when the next time I'll be able to land another bottle uh, of that. So, like I said, without further ado, let's jump right into this. And we're going back to our roots here and we're opening up a bottle for the first time live and uh and reviewing it so that's the way we like to do things here on uh on whiskey coach nice little healthy pour i love the smell of a freshly opened bourbon bottle i just just i mean i don't know how you don't like that if you're a bourbon guy um price point wise the standard offering was, geez, I should have known I bought it today, 30 ish dollars. I think that's pretty, uh, pretty widely, uh, you know, released and, and, you know, priced. It's kind of right in that $30 range. This one, the 15 year old, will range a little bit more. I've seen this, uh, not locally, but as low as 50, 55 bucks. As high as maybe a hundred, I think kind of the the median, the average price you're going to see on it is in the 75, maybe I'd say 65 to 75 dollars is kind of what you uh, what you should expect to pay for the 50. Man, that was on there good. It's still on there actually. The neck. So that's about uh, I guess that's about what you're going to expect to pay on the 15. Uh, as you can see, really. Really nice neck. Anywhere, anytime, it's always a pleasure. It's a cool little tagline. It's got a next. Oh, man. That is no joke of a stopper. I could 
you take someone down with that thing. And this one smells much different. Huh. I guess I should probably pour some. Like I said, this one I've actually had at a local, wow, party foul, at a local, uh, local establishment and really liked it a whole lot. So I'm looking forward to see, excuse me, looking forward to see if I enjoy that this much again uh, this time. <sighs> Whew, man, that's, my whole bar is going to smell like bourbon for like a couple days and that's not, that's not the worst thing in the world. Man, she smells good. Okay, color. I do see an immediate difference. Standard. 15. There is a little bit of a difference. Nose on a standard. I don't know what, what the age on this is. Oh, by the way. Sorry, sidebar. This is Source Bourbon. Um, it's it's oh, IW Harper is a brand that's owned by Diageo, big conglomerate, owns Crown Royal, owns a number of labels you're you're very familiar with. Bottled in uh, Tullahoma, Tennessee, where the orphan barrel stuff is barreled. So it's Source Juice. Uh, so we're not exactly positive on on where this is being made. It used to be uh, produced at the old legendary Bernheim Distillery. But yeah, younger juice. It feels like it's younger, at least. It doesn't necessarily mean it is. Mash bill on the, the standard bottle is 20, I'm sorry, 73% corn, 18% rye, and 9% barley. So pretty standard, I guess. Let's give this one a taste. say it's pretty unremarkable it's I've certainly had worse I, I you know I and that's that's kind of a um that's kind of a bad thing to say about a bourbon I guess the first time you try it but no it's not bad you know what it reminds me of a little bit it reminds me of the Evan Williams single barrel just a little bit and I like that bourbon uh just fine um it's it's here and gone quickly um thin not a lot of viscosity, not a lot of fire. I mean, guys, you know, when you're talking a, 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 a 82 proof bourbon, I mean, that's, that's Basil Hayden territory. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a pretty diluted entry level type of bourbon. And that's kind of what you're getting here. It's just everything's subtle and muted a little bit. You're kind of getting the things you'd expect, but it's a little more distant in terms of the flavor in the palate. Uh, it's, it's, it's bourbon. I'll give this a, I was going to give it a five something. We'll get a 4.9 just because they did knock it down from, uh, you know, I think anything under 90 is really pushing it, um, in terms of watering something down. I'll give it a 4.9. It's okay. I'm not going to kick it out of bed. It'd be fine in a cocktail, but, um, I don't know. I don't think it's remarkable. Cleanse the palate a little bit here. <clears throat> now, the 15 year old. You're just getting more intensity already, right on the nose. And it's not a proof thing. Like I said, we're only looking at an extra, you know, four, 86 and 80. Yeah, four proof. Um, so it's not alcohol necessarily. But it's just more robust, it's more flavor, it's more powerful, it's more durable, it just it just got more oomph. Um like uh God, what is that? Oh man, I'm drawing a blank on what I'm oh, you know what it's it sounds bad. It's almost like a varnish, like a wood varnish. Like a like a polished flavor. Or smell, I should say. Uh, sweetness, uh, tons of sweetness, but not in a traditional bourbon, it's like bourbon, more like a, man, I'm having a hard time, like a, like a, like a, like an apple pie almost, like a, 
Dutch apple pie. That's probably the best description, like burnt sugars and apples. Great nose. Yeah, really good nose. Let's dive into this. Yeah, that's as enjoyable as I thought it was the, the, the first time I had it. Definitely a step up. And I'm still feeling it, which is nice. It's, it's, it's lasting a little longer. It's more of a caramel on the finish. Um, both of them, by the way, the, the mouthfeel is just goes down so easy when you, when you first have the entry point into your mouth. Um, you know, finish is nice and soft. Uh, it's not, it's certainly not an aggressive, you know, uh, it's nowhere near a barrel proof at, you know, 84, kind of keep forgetting, what is it, 86 proof, 86 proof, but, but very pleasant. Um, I think both of these bourbons would be very, very good for a new bourbon drinker in particular. But yeah, you're getting different, it's taking you different directions. You're getting wood, you're getting sweetness, you're getting a little more life in the, in the throat. You're getting vibrancy, you're getting uh, a little bit more tannins. It's just a more complex, more well-rounded, more mature uh, bourbon. To me, I wouldn't... Oh, and by the way, the mash bill is different on these. Like I said, this one's 73, 18 rye and 9% barley. This one's 86% corn, so it's more corn heavy, 6% uh, rye. 8% uh, barley. So it is a little bit different, obviously, and you have the age uh, opposed to an NAS, non-age statement. Quick sidebar. Oh, I'll give the 15-year a 7.1. Now I'll give it a 7.1. Good, good pour. Um, not, not the best I've had, but good pour. Maybe they have an idea why I would bring a forged doke out tonight. I'll tell you. Also a Diageo product, also bottled in Tullahoma, um, where they're doing the uh, where they're doing the uh, I.W. Harper. Fifteen years, fifteen years. Hmm. Ninety point five proof. Listen to this, guys. The mash bill on this: eighty six corn, seven percent rye, six percent barley. Very close. Like I said, this one's 86, 6 rye, and 8 barley. So, very, very similar juice um, to what the Forged Oak is, you know. And, and most of you guys probably know a little bit about the Orphan Barrel stuff. But that's all I got, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, hope you enjoyed Jay Snoop. Uh, thanks again to Bobby, uh, local liquor store uh, co-owner. And until next time, and as always, glasses up. See you guys soon.